don't think I have ever seen such a, like, a wall of happiness. Like, this is the most amount of happiness that there's, like, Street Fighter, there's, like, Zelda poster, and what's the one under the Street Fighter poster you got in the background? God of War. Oh, it's God of War? Yeah. Well, let me show you more and look. look oh, my there. goodness. <laughs> look over there. <laughs> And there's like an Xbox jersey over there too. That is amazing. What all stuff you've got over there. Yeah, I got a uh, one of the drums team sign it from Slayer. I don't know what, what oh, is that nice. called. So I yeah. Excellent. This is my little game. This is my little game room. Yeah, this is, uh, I think, the first time we've ever seen a man cave of this size. Because most of the time we've seen him, especially with Mort, who we've had on the show before. And he's got, like, a huge wall of stuff. Have you ever oh, yeah. thought about having, like, a bigger room to display oh. stuff? Or is it just kind oh, of a thing in the future? Of course. Uh, I mean, right now... Money wise, this is what can I afford? But yeah, in the mm -hmm. I got in my plans to get a bigger house, and of course, having walls and walls of video games and figures and crazy stuff. That's one of the other thing I was gonna ask is like of all the stuff that you have on your walls right now, I would assume that because you're a music fan yourself, that the Slayer symbol would probably be one of your favorite pieces in your collection at the moment. Yes, sir. And, well, let me check this out. Let me see if I can... Oh, my God. See that? Man, holy cow. Oh, the Iron Maiden flag. Nice. Oh, and there's like a power glove up there, too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, um... I, I like... Every, every couple of months, I like to change, you know, the setting of the game room. So, a couple of months ago, there was a... Uh, War of Nintendo toys over there. Now, oh, nice. It's only nice. Mega Man, and, and I put the, the Iron Maiden flag. Excellent. So, so that's the... I don't know what I'm going... Yeah, go oh, ahead. Sorry about that. I interrupted you when you were still talking. But the other thing I was going to make a comment on is... Uh, it, it's kind of hard to see where the camera is right now, but you're wearing a Kiss shirt. So it's like you're basically... Yeah, there it is. You're decked out in, like, everything rock. Aside from just oh, Iron Maiden, I know that that's like what you say oh, is your favorite band right now. And oh, check this out. All the vests. Yeah, I've seen you wear that at times whenever you're out going game hunting. And uh, is that the same one that you have the Bullet Club patch or whatever the uh, the vest is? Because that's the one that no. I remember seeing you wear a lot of the time. Yeah, that one, actually, I give it away to a kid. Last oh, really? year in Sacramento, yeah, yeah. Thank you, Rifo, to put that footage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we was hunting in Sacramento Expo, mm -hmm. and a cool kid. Uh, I, I, I told the guys, I say, well, you know, it was around Christmas time. I say, let's let's give this away to the first kid that stop us and say hi, and and yeah, the rest is history. <laughs> This cool kid with his dad stop us, and I give him the jacket. So, ah, that's he, that, that's good though. Oh yeah, it was it was awesome. It was it was really good. Good experience. I love seeing people smile. It's it's a good experience to be able to have that because I know that there's not a lot of channels like Pixel Game Squad that are out there. And if there was, like, any channel that I would say, if you want a true definition of what I feel a video gaming content channel or just a community, like, no matter if you're in video games, uh, music, or if it's some other type of community that's out there, if you want a positive experience to go by, Pixel Game Squad is the one I always point to. When, uh, whenever you guys go out to conventions or whenever you're just going out game hunting... What is that type of uh, experience that you always strive to have? Is it always just the the goofy antics, or is it just mostly just the the, uh, the enjoyment of being friends with one another? And that's a great question, man. Mm -hmm. That's a great question. They, I never been asked that. Um, I would say it's it's a mix of both. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, but okay, you're talking about events. Yeah, like, like conventions or going conventions. to like a swap meet. Yeah. Okay, I will say swap meet mm -hmm. for me personally is the hanging around with the boys. Um, conventions is is more for me. I'm talking for me. Uh, is 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 being with the people, and the rest is a plus for me. It definitely and is. and for the what I'm saying for the SWAT me is is hanging with the guys and have fun. Mm -hmm. It's because I live almost two hours from there from then. Oh wow! And not every not every weekend I can meet them. So probably you guys already you know seen that in the all in the past 10 or 15 pixel game squad videos it's been so difficult for me uh in the in the past two months to go there and you know spend time with them so that's why this past weekend it was freaking awesome it was yeah. about two months yeah. since i seen last time i saw them so yeah man yeah. it's crazy <laughs> <laughs> It's it's one of those things that it's always hard on people when uh, you basically said about a two-hour time difference being able to travel back and forth, but it's always those friendships, especially the people that you meet online, that if you never get the chance to be able to see them very often, that it's a special type of experience to be able to <laughs> either it's a convention or, of course, a swap meet, but... If, if there's, like, a special moment that you could basically say is, like, one of your favorite things about being able to hang out with the guys, what would you say is one of your favorite past experiences? Or, you, like, the Arizona trip, for example? Yeah, uh, with the with the, with the the other guys from Pixel Game Squad, or with... Or for anybody. Overall? Anybody you could think of. Hmm, well, oh, there's a lot, man. One of, I would say one of my favorite, more, I mean, I don't know if I ever told you my memory sucks, <laughs> but one of my favorite one, it was like, I think it was like before the pandemic. Oh, I cannot say that. Oh, <laughs> before, I got it. That's okay. <laughs> before everything closed down, I think it was the last SoCal uh, gaming expo, the mm. big one. Uh Followers, a, a, a cool follower from the channel. He was in a wheelchair. Uh, he stopped me, and, and, and he asked me to sing Iron Maiden with him. Oh, and that was oh, wow. freaking awesome! <laughs> I, yeah, dude, that, that was one of my favorite one. And and it, it's so many, man. He's he's uh, kids that you know. Oh, there's one in Phoenix. I think mm -hmm. it was the second time I was in Phoenix. There was this kid. I remember he was wearing the Mario Maker yellow hat. Oh, yeah, the he helmet. With... <laughs> yeah, he was with, with his dad. And, and the kid challenged me to play Street Fighter. And, and I was playing Street Fighter. And he started crying like, oh, this is the best day of my life. And oh. Yeah, and, and and his dad start crying, and and Rifo, Ricky, and me we start crying. That's that was that was awesome. Um, it, there's so many, man. Like I say, there's so so many, so many. Uh, let me see. And the meeting. Uh, one of the first time I met Metal Jesus, Rifo knows. Mm -hmm. One of my favorite YouTubers is Metal Jesus. And I think uh, that was the only time I, was, I get nervous, super nervous, <laughs> on, you know, on camera mm -hmm. and, and outside the camera that Rifo started making fun of me, like, dude, you was sweating, <laughs> you should see your face, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and yeah, that was another one. Uh, there's so many, man. There, there's so many. Uh, and you know what is awesome? Hmm. Almost all those special situation happens when the camera is 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 off. So, yeah, dude, it's it's insane. It's it's a it's a lot, man. I can I can keep going and going and going and going. 
<laughs> if I remember one, I, I told you. <laughs> oh, that's okay. Uh, that's yeah, actually one of my so favorite. Many, oh, sorry, go ahead. So many, so many, so many. <laughs> that was uh, one of the other things I was going to say because uh, the catchphrase, I don't know if I ever told you, that's like one of the most quoted things I remember. Uh, me and my friends usually watch Pixel Game Squad, and whenever you pop on, you. we always expect you to say, I don't know if I ever told you, and it's like, we just said it like right there, and then <laughs> you're just so happy to <laughs> tell people this info. So, you, you Oh, you sorry. think I should I should do I should do teachers with that? Oh really? Yeah, I <laughs> think that that would be some merch you could put on for your uh, YouTube channel or be able to collaborate oh, with Pixel Game Squad. That would be awesome. <laughs> put it up in a bumper sticker or something where people. Oh, dude, that's <laughs> oh man! You just give me the greatest idea ever. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> You're awesome. It's a million dollar <laughs> idea, and there you go. Gabo the Giver, I just gave you an idea. <laughs> yeah! Yeah! Okay, so uh, back to talking about Pixel Game Squad stuff for a sec, because I know that you've been in a few. I guess you could probably go on there and say that you've been on some. When uh, when you started getting involved into doing the episodes with uh, Riff and uh, Ricky, Ricky. I, I have the hardest time remembering names, but and and, yeah. and and back well, and back then we you uh, NES Complex too. Oh, he yes. was full time and Mikey, yeah, uh, Uncle Bukuhiro Complex, Mikey, <laughs> Mister Complex. You need you need to interview him. What an amazing guy! If and Mikey, uh, yeah, if there was like a way for me to be able to get a hold of everybody, I would love to be able to have those guys on. And I know that every single one of them are busy with uh, their own personal lives, but yeah, if they're watching this, that would be a goal to be able to get them on, because I'd love to be able to have a chat with yeah, them. Yeah, I can help you with that. Just remind me, because I don't know if I told you my memory sucks. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Well, thank you, Gabo, very much for that offer, and that's uh, that's awesome that there's people that have, like, high subscriber accounts that will watch these videos, and I know that they're not the best quality, but I try to do with what I'm given at the moment, but yeah, that would be awesome to be able to get those guys on the show. So, uh, but yeah, I was, since I was asking about uh, Pixel Game Squad... And just you being a part of the show, because a lot of people, whenever they watch those videos, they always expect to see the familiar faces. And you being one of the more recent ones that have been on there a lot. How was it that you got involved with Pixel Game Squad? Was it because you were friends with them for a while, or was it just you were a fan of the show and wanted to see about helping out <laughs> with any video content with them? Uh, I was I was a fan of the show actually uh, mm -hmm. from Retro Liberty days. Oh yeah, and I still a fan of the show. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I get the chance to meet with Rifo in one of the in one event, and I sit down and talk with him, and then uh, I start you know sending message to. You know it was Mikey because Mikey is the one in charge of the social media mm -hmm. on Instagram. And one day I was working close to the office they used to work and I say, Hey, let's go grab a lunch. I invite you guys. And we sit down and we talk and and then uh probably nobody knows this outside the squad that you're gonna be the first one. Mm. And then, uh, around that time, E3, E3, uh, I think it was 2018, or, yeah, 2018, E3, 2018, I say, you know what, uh, I asked Rifo if he's going, and I was going, mm -hmm. but I asked, what about Ricky, oh, Ricky cannot make it, blah, 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 I say, you know what, here's my credit card, and I... I bought him the the ticket to go. Holy cow! So that was, I, yeah, I think that was the, the first gift I give to <laughs> to Riquito. Wow! And, and I think that was the first time. Yeah, that was the first time we we hang out 
more than one uh, one or two hours and we we did a little little hunt and I remember uh watching Riff uh, start like getting back to the Retro Liberty days mm -hmm. and and after that we, we had such a blast. After that they invite me to go and, and do a little hunt in fries. Uh that's like a Best Buy. It used to be like a Best Buy store and we did a little hunt and and reef film too and then uh all of a sudden they invite me to go to uh to a toy store and then uh to swat me and and all suddenly i'm in the squad you know <laughs> and i i i'm part of the squad i think if my memory doesn't fail me it was never like like a initiation like 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 welcome your part of the squad it just mm -hmm. i don't know he grew up like that and 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 i became family and and you know the rest is history it's it's a good experience to be able to see that cause oh yeah especially it's... from the few times that when you would usually it's like right before you guys would go game hunting at swap meets that you're out in the parking lot and it's the first thing that happens it's like i got you guys gifts and it's like at that time it's oh, yeah. like they would never expect it and you usually give them like some of the best gift ideas imaginable i think there was like a street fighter controller you gave uh ricky one time uh yeah oh i i i, I don't want to sound cocky but i give him so much that i don't remember <laughs> <laughs> and it's good because it's hard to keep up with whatever gifts that you give to anybody, whether it's a family member or a friend. And that thing to me is what I consider one of my favorite bits about being able to give gifts to people is like you don't expect anything in return. You just want to show oh, no. that you appreciate them. And it's like this is my gratitude for being yeah. able to be a part of your life as much as you've been a part of mine. Yeah, I mean... Uh, give his material experience is gonna stay there forever mm -hmm. so for example you know what I think I think the only one I never give a, a gift a present if I'm not wrong again I think it's Mort and it's because mm -hmm. Mort has everything what can I give to him <laughs> <laughs> he I'll... give he give me gift he give me some stuff but mm -hmm. for some reason i cannot find or i don't know if i if i if i forgot if i give something probably give something to him <laughs> but i think he's the only one because he has everything um yeah complex yeah i, <laughs> I give a couple of gifts to complex that i know he needed for his video and mm -hmm. i know he he appreciated it um, so, honestly, uh, because you're trying to figure out something to give to Mort, the gift of Gabo. Like, just give him a bear hug whenever you come to visit the man, and it'd be like, that's uh, enough always. of Gabo to pass around. <laughs> oh, uh, um, a, a hug, a kiss in the cheek, and a slap in the butt. There we go. That's, that's the that's end of the day right actually, there. I was, <laughs> actually, I was, yeah, actually, I was hunting with Mort uh, in the weekend. Over there in Arizona, mm. we have a blast. Mort is, is a really good guy. I love Mort. I, I love everybody in the squad. Everybody in the group is is amazing. They're such unique characters. Everyone is different. Um, uh, everybody is uh, different. Everybody has their own way of doing things, and 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 yeah, is. It's like a family, it's a brotherhood, especially especially between Ricky, Rifo, and me. I, I will say uh, we, we fight. <laughs> we, we, uh, <laughs> we have arguments. Mm -hmm. uh, we get pissed off with each other, but at the end of the day, when when we are face-to-face, -face, it's all love. And, and it's like, it's a family. And it's, it, you know, it happens in all the families, so... Yeah. 
That's that's good. He's though. beautiful. He's, he's a beautiful friendship. An extremely beautiful friendship. And yeah. that was the other thing I was going to say is that when you got a part of the group that you were like one of the first individuals that I could remember that was like oozing, not necessarily just only charisma, but like oozing happiness. And you basically coined the term happiness. So happiness <laughs> <laughs> yeah so i guess uh we could basically call you the uh i don't know it's like the the xp boost of pixel game squad <laughs> where it's Thank like you. that much happiness is so oozed out to the point of like everybody gets an extra boost of happiness is it so hard at times to be able to try to keep that much happiness in or is it just you're happy with your friends that's more than enough to go around uh, I think is uh, I think when when we are together and and we are like in events or SWAT meet, mm -hmm. I think the excitement of being with my friends is what make me crazy and and do the crazy stuff, <laughs> and and you you know where the happiness thing come out, uh, where it borns and how how we start in the channel. You know that story um, or not? I don't think so. Okay, so we start. Uh, I was never a big Beatles fan, and and Rifo one day he to, he's, he he sent me a message say, "Hey, you need to listen to this album now, the White Album." Oh yeah. And I, yeah, and I started listening, listening, and because I'm very close, to be honest, I'm very close-minded. To hear new stuff. Oh, gotcha. So I start, yeah, I started listening to that album, man, and and I fall in love. And then he comes, this song, "Happiness Is a One Gun," and I don't know if you know the song, but at the end of the song, it start like happiness. So we, uh, well, I start putting happiness on everything. Nice. And like, oh, we're going home, happiness. We're going home. Yes, happiness. <laughs> and 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 Rifo, Rifo is the man. <laughs> and, yes, he is. And he make it a thing. He's like, he start putting in the videos and videos and the happiness born. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, I, we always been. I I always been like that. Yeah, you know, like happy, that's... like crazy, like like try to make everybody laugh and and and. and feel the happiness that's that's what i'd like to do you know that's when when i give something to somebody not expecting anything on in the back just a smile or a hug and, and and be happy for that moment that's that's what i that's what i love that's what we love that's the most important thing especially when friendships are sometimes hard to keep a lot of the time i feel but Honestly, whenever yeah. people watch, whether you're doing your own thing or whether you're on Pixel Game Squad, it always seems like that type of happiness, that basically that emotion yeah. is so rare nowadays that it's always a good feeling whenever people watch you guys. Yeah, um, what I can say about Pixel Game Squad is like everything you see on camera is true. <laughs> I mean, it's real. There's no actors. It's just mostly two, three, four guys together being, you know, friends. Just being like how they are, being idiots. Especially, <laughs> I think the no, it's true. I think the the most idiots ones is Rifo and me, definitely, <laughs> definitely. We are the more, I will say, the more hardcore ones. That well, we don't care. <laughs> well, I have to ask, whenever uh, NES Complex is with you guys, would he be more like the chaperone of the group, or is it just he's also a knucklehead but in heart? No, well, Complex is very funny guy. Hmm. Very intelligent, smart guy. And more too. More is very funny, too. And very intelligent. But... Well, uh, let me answer your question. No, uh, Complex is, is more like when he see that hardcore stuff with that 
refund me with you. He's like, he's, he just stayed there like, you know? Mm -hmm. So, but, but Complex is a very funny guy. He is, I, I see more like Complex is the dad, you know? He's the father <laughs> figure. <laughs> and he's got a lot of gray hairs now, so I mean, it fits the, the old man narrative nowadays. <laughs> and beautiful eyes. Exactly. There's not but a lot of people who can do that. Uh, I, I, in the past couple of months, I, I would say in the past year, because he's starting in last year in South Carolina event, I have the chance finally to be one-on-one -on -one with Complex and, and sit down and talk a lot and get to know him better and better and better and better. And what an amazing, beautiful soul. He's a, he's a beautiful guy. He's a beautiful. I'm in love with Complex. <laughs> we we, a spoiler alert. We filmed a couple of things for his channel. So oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. He, he's amazing. Um, Ricky too. I love Ricky. I mean, I don't know if you're going to ask uh, what is everybody's character, but I can tell you <laughs> if you <laughs> want to ahead. know. Yeah. So so Rifo Rifo is the brain. Rifo is the. I love Rifo. I I I'm gonna be eternally grateful with Rifo. He's he's in a he's such a beautiful person, and me and Rifo sometimes we 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 butt heads. Oh yeah. Because <laughs> sometimes we sometimes we 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 are. I will say 75% we are the same in some, you know, how we, how we think, how we want to do things. But I love Rifo to death. What a guy. Everything that happens to me in the past couple of years because of him. And I'm going to be eternally grateful with him. And, and yeah, he's, a, he's stupid and he's an idiot. <laughs> and very like, animated uh, whenever he's on camera. Oh, camera. That, that guy, <laughs> that, no, he's worse. Trust me, you think oh. he's an idiot on camera? He's, he's like 10 times more outside camera. Oh, he's, my gosh. Oh my <laughs> and that guy, that guy doesn't, doesn't drink coffee. He doesn't do drugs. He doesn't do uh, energy drinks. That's natural energy over there. Holy cow. Holy cow. So, yeah, I can. Uh, it's good that I live two hours from him because I, I cannot. I cannot think me living like 10 minutes from him. Every day, the same thing, the same energy. I cannot, I cannot do that. <laughs> I, I could not even see how that's even possible for someone like that. So it's no coffee, no sugar, energy drinks. He just is the explosion of energy like he's the Tasmanian devil. He's a, yeah, he's, I don't know. I don't know how he do it and, and, and how, I would say Rifo is a genius. He's a genius because... He, he he do the videos. He doesn't have scripts. Mm -hmm. He doesn't have anything. Sometimes we are you know sitting down in a table, and he's like, oh wait a minute, and he come up with something, and he writing down the idea. Or sometimes he's like, send send us a message saying like, oh I just filmed a video in one hour, and wow. when the video comes out, it's it's one of those best videos. So so I don't know. He's He's a genius. He's a freaking genius. I, I admire him so much, and I love him so much. And, and like I say, I I I always be eternally grateful with him. What a guy! What a what amazing dude! What a good, he's a really good friend too. Amazing Man. good. Friend. Yeah, that's the other Ricky. thing. Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, all I was going to say is that it, whenever there's times that you hear the term, that guy is such a character, that there's always that point where you think that they're just that, that they're only putting on a character. But we've had people on here before that have always stated that that's who they are as a person. And oh, yeah. it's just 
sometimes they exude like maybe about 20% more just because they're doing YouTube content, but from the way that you described Riff is like just pretty much proof that people can be who they are and not have oh, to yeah. try to act like a different person. Well, I think that was one of the rules they told me when they let me, you know, film with them. Like, first, uh, don't curse in the videos. <laughs> Second, always be nice with everybody. Always. No matter if you're having a bad day. Mm -hmm. And third, be yourself. That's it. And I said, well, I think that's easy. I don't know about the part of cursing but yeah i think i'm doing a great job <laughs> well yeah you haven't cursed one bit in the entire interview so maybe there's a chance during the recording that you'll just let it slip up or something like that i will try not i try not to curse <laughs> lately but let's see uh ricky ricky's a teddy bear ricky oh my god ricky's amazing I love Ricky so much too. Ricky's like I don't I I don't know if somebody can be mad with Ricky because Ricky is Ricky. He is Ricky. He's I see in Ricky angry. Actually, I make Ricky angry. And I oh, think I'm really? the only person. Oh yeah. I think I'm the only person that can do that. Oh jeez. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but Ricky is amazing soul, amazing soul, uh, mercy, amazing person. He cares about people. Uh, he always there. He would the same with Brifo to help. And and yeah, what what else I can say about Ricky? He's just amazing guy. Yeah, and he's I got already, the best smile I, out there. Oh yeah, he always smiling. Ricky's always smiling. But some, but some for some reason. Ricky love giving me shit. Oh, here really? you go. Sorry. There we go. We got one for the recording. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> no, but he loves it. He loves it. I don't know. He <laughs> he always got me. He always got me. But Ricky's amazing. I already told you about Complex. Mm -hmm. I told you about Mort. Mort is a great guy, too. What a good guy, good friend. Uh, he's a genius, too. And he's super funny. Mort is super funny. Really, really great guy. And Mikey, uh, Mikey is an old. <laughs> Mikey is super funny too. Mikey is amazing dude. Um, too bad he loved Funko Pops because we think Funko Pop sucks. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Mikey is awesome. Mikey is great. A good friend too. Everybody in the squad is amazing. Man. Well, here you go, that's yeah. Pixel Game Squad. That's the whole group, unless there's like a... I know that back in the day when NWO was a thing, they had NWO, White and Black, and then there was, of course, the Wolf Pack, and uh, I think there was the LWO, which wasn't affiliated with NWO. Maybe there's like a possibility of doing a Pixel Game Squad West and Pixel Game Squad East by chance? Uh, I don't know. The, the reality is, and this is the reality, Pixel Game Squad is Riff and Ricky. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. we are, on the rest, we are like, we are part of the squad, but those two are the main the main squad, you know? Mm -hmm. Those two are, without, without Ricky, there's no Pixel Game Squad. And of course, without Riffo, there's no Pixel Game Squad, but it can be... Pixel Game Squad without Gabo, it can be Pixel Game Squad without Complex. So who knows? I mean, the the I seen this as a Wu Tang Clan. You remember Wu Tang oh, Clan? Oh yes, yeah, that's a good one. Together, they wa they wasn't you know they are amazing, hmm. but each one of the members are doing their own side project. So that's what we're doing right now. So you know, Complex. He's complex. He's super big. And he's amazing. He's a, he's a genius. Complex is a genius. We got more. More is freaking awesome. Mm -hmm. Freaking awesome. And we got a uh, Mikey too. Mikey, he got his own channel. He's doing his own stuff, and he's amazing. And we got Gabo that he's studying, and he sucks. 
<laughs> I think I, I think I, I'm the most unprofessional one because and, and I do it on purpose. I was talking with with Rifo about it. Um, we can get to that later if you want. Oh, that's okay. Uh, you're more than welcome to talk about it right now if you want to, because we did actually have something else Pixel Game Squad related. Because I know that. Going out yeah. for game hunting deals was part of that. But yeah, you're more welcome to talk about it right now oh, if no, you want go, to. Yeah, go ahead. We can talk about that later. Okay. Uh, well, uh, since we're still talking about the Pixel Game Squad and being able to go out to flea markets and sometimes yard sales, I don't remember which episodes had those on there, but... Whenever you guys look for deals, uh, has there ever been a time where... I know that we've seen you guys get really lucky on the finds. What was the one moment that you guys went to a booth and you thought it was one of the worst things that you had to dig through? Like, old men underwear that was like all that they sold by chance. Oh, pfft. It happens every time we go into the swap meet. Um... I think you're talking about uh, uh, episode in particular, or are just like any uh, any flea market that you guys have went to. If there was like a vendor that had some items, or if there was like part of the flea market area that you guys found nothing for inventory or oh, not inventory like uh, items to collect. Excuse me. Yeah, like like I say, it happens. Well, not uh, it happens every time you're going to the SWAT meet. There's a uh, I think I think I think there's uh, I mean Riff and Ricky have been very lucky for the past I would say two months. <laughs> but before that it was time that we was there and we didn't find anything. Like we start browsing and yeah, we found like underwear. We found like if we found games and those games are like very sticky. Oh yeah, and sometimes one one time, I think it was in a Riverside what meet. We was hunting, and we found a we found a box full of games. It was all PS2, Xbox 360. And they was very dirty, mm. with a lot of like sand, like like, like oh, black yeah. black stuff. Oof. And we start opening the covers, and there was no games, mm. no games. So that's you know, that's one. One of the baddest one, because we get all dirty and, and sticky, and we didn't have, we didn't have like baby wipes to clean our hands. Oh yeah, we didn't uh, have, yeah, we didn't have hand sanitizer because it was before you know the pandemic. Everything, yeah. yeah, yeah, that was a crazy one. Um, but yeah, there's been, there's been uh, times that we go to SWAT meet and we film and we don't find anything. And that doesn't make it on, on an episode, you know? It doesn't work to, to make a episode because we didn't find anything. So, yeah, it happens. And yeah. I guess to uh, kind of change things up as far as, like, video game finds go, um, right before the pandemic hit, like, I remember it was a year before all of it happened, you guys went into a video game warehouse, and I know of the guy because Bobby. I'm a part of a video game business owner Facebook group, and he usually yeah. does wholesale for brand new modern stuff. I've never yeah, that's been probably... able to go there before, but how was that for you guys to be able to go over and see not just the modern sealed stuff, but stuff all the way back from, like, NES, Super Nintendo, uh, Sega Saturn, Dreamcast, that type of generation? Okay, you remember... Uh, the Indiana Jones movies mm -hmm. at the end, yes. When you see the relics in like a warehouse, mm -hmm. it's like that, bro. We 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 go there twice. The first time it was the best, and you know I I I heard we heard things about it, but it's it's like you have to be there to experience that because it's overwhelming. Is games everywhere, everywhere, and it's rows and rows and rows and rows of boxes 
full of video games, brand new video games, is something insane. And and we only check like twenty five percent of the warehouse. Holy cow! You know, that was only twenty five percent. That was I think that's one of the highlights of Pixel Game Squad. I know other people have been there, mm-hmm. but I think we was the we was the first. We was the first one over there. That was insane. Yeah, and there was a a copy of uh, I think it was Rico for the Nintendo Switch. I'm trying to remember who it was that picked that. Oh up. yeah, Rico. Yeah, he sucks. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, what a bad game. Yeah, I actually picked that up after watching the episode because oh, I, so I was sorry. <laughs> yeah, I was interested in it, and then it's like for the amount of content, there is like nothing. And it's just, it's repetition because you have, like, a, not necessarily a horde mode, but it's like you get enemies that come in waves, and it's just the dumbest AI. It looks okay for being on the Switch, but, yeah, I was kind of disappointed to be able to get that one. Oh, me too. Bro, sorry. Bro, you was mad with me. <laughs> <laughs> I was the one that picked it up. Actually, actually, one of my favorite items in my game room... I pick it up that day. Um, I, you guys gonna see it because I'm planning to do a video for my channel soon, and I gonna show it. Oh, nice! And it's in the. I I think it's in the in that video. So, but it's something really really cool. Uh, we found we found a lot of like rare stuff over there, mm-hmm. but they didn't. Uh, Bobby didn't want to sell it to us. <laughs> but, <laughs> but we found. We found things that he he didn't even know they was there, and, and yeah, he, yeah, it's crazy, man. That's that was experience, dude. Since you mentioned about that, because one of my favorite parts about that whole entire episode was when y'all went into that smaller room, and there was the test unit station. The yellow Zelda test cartridge, and then of course yes. the Mario statue. I do video gaming content on the side, aside from just doing interviews, where I cover over obscure, rare video gaming history. And it's like, that's the type of stuff that is, like, right up my alley, because you don't ever get to see anybody ever hold any of those items in their hands unless you used to work at a store that was, like, at a Sears or, like, a KB Toys back in the day. That was... Actually, I need to call Bobby. I want that. <laughs> I, think we, I think he has two. I think he has two. And now that I'm deep into the Nintendo hole, mm-hmm. collecting NES games, I think uh, I should call him, ask about that. Uh, yeah, dude. That, he got so many crazy stuff over there, bro. Talking about that, can you believe... I hold in my hand uh, a stadium event. Oh yeah, that's right. I I don't even think that got uh, in the video, did it? No, I uh, no. I that was in Portland. No, that I. Oh. No, I I think it was in. No, I I hold that game from a vendor in Portland, but he has it. In, you know, in lockdown, mm-hmm. and we was there, and the guy. He's friend of Rifo, and and I asked him, "Hey, can I hold it?" He said, "Yeah." So I was super nervous, man. <laughs> but he's, he's he's experienced, dude. He's all experienced, man. He's who will say that a video game can bring so much happiness to a person? <laughs> yeah, that's uh, kind of the same thing with me. When uh, since you mentioned about stadium events on my Instagram, uh, it's like the last few photos that I had up on there, somebody came by the booth, and I think, I don't even know what they were trying to do with it, but there was, like, a gray NWC that they were just carrying around in their bag, and it was the water-graded NWC. And I was just asking, it's like, is it okay for me to take a photo of this? Because I don't think my friends would ever believe that this happened. And he's like, yeah, go ahead. So I was, like, nervous holding on to it, just looking at the label. And I forgot that I was supposed to be taking a photo of it because 
I never got to compete in that tournament back in the day because my family never really had much for money. So this was I just piece I of history. I didn't even know about it. Yeah, I didn't even know about that tournament. I didn't even know. Yeah. Uh, how old are you? I'm actually 35. We'll be 36 oh. next year. Hey, you're young. <laughs> I'm, four, I'm 42. Holy cow. You don't even look 42. You look more oh, like 25. You. Oh come on! <laughs> you're being you're being a you're being a good guy now. No. Uh, yeah, I don't even I don't even remember that, bro. I didn't even know about it. Yeah, unless he had Nintendo Power magazine, which that was kind of hard for a lot of us to be able to get, unless he had a friend that had a subscription to it. Yeah, yeah. I just I think the only memory i have seen competitions like that back in the day it was in the in the movie the wizard mm -hmm. that's it when oh, they wow. chose super mario 3. yeah first but, time. yeah i'm from puerto rico and over there and over there um the gaming we yeah i grew up in a gaming culture but you know it was not like here mm -hmm. of course and back then if you think my English is bad now, imagine back then. So I remember my mom buying me the Nintendo Powers and I started, you know, looking at the pictures and everything, but I didn't understand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's that's the love of video gaming. You don't have to know words, you just see <laughs> photos and it's like, yeah, that's what video games are all about right there. There you go. That's it. That's the magic of the video games. All right. Well, since uh, you brought up Puerto Rico, what as far as like differences from like here in the U.S., like the area you're at now, how much yes. different for video games is it compared to when it was back at your home? I will say right now, uh, I've not been there. In, last time I was there, it was five years ago, <laughs> and. I will say it's very different now because what I am right now, we still have game stops, you know. Uh, in my area, there's a couple of retro stores, and you know, one hour away, I can go to LA, I can find retro stores, and, and you know, Best Buys and everything. In Puerto Rico, mm -hmm. uh, when I grew up. Uh, we used to buy the games in Kmart. Kmart was big over there. Oh, that nice. was when I was yeah. That was when I was a kid. When I was teenager, uh, we we used to have those stores like Babagish, Babag something like that. Yeah, Babages, I think. Yeah, EB. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. then GameStop. And you know, GameStop bought everything. Mm -hmm. um, we used to have close to my house, like a, probably like two or three local stores that used to sell video games. And but but the main the main one we we used to rent a lot of video games in local video stores. Uh, you know, when I start working and making money, that's when I start buying games. Before that, it was all renting. Probably, I used to have like two or three games. The rest, it was renting. Oh yeah, that was. Oh, yeah, but, for us. For yeah, us. but the different. It, it is. Back then, I will say it was the same as now, but now it's different because there's no GameStop anymore over there. Oh wow. Oh, wow. Yeah. And there's no Kmart. And they only have Walmart. They have a couple of local stores. And and they have Best Buy. But that's for, you know, new games. For retro, they got a couple of retro stores. It's getting the retro, the video, the, you know, the retro video games community over there is, is growing. Mm -hmm. It's growing over there. Is be able to see yeah. stuff like that still stick around, and I'm guessing as far as like prices over there would be about the same as it is over in California, or I cannot answer that question. Well, I don't, I don't know right now. 
Mm -hmm. Like I said, last time I was there five years ago, I, I, I bought in a local store. I bought a Mega Man Legends two oh, nice. for like fifty bucks. Yeah, for like fifty bucks. Wow. Uh, uh, what was the other one? A big PS two game. Um, I forgot them. See, my memory sucks. <laughs> uh, for forty bucks, dude. Uh, Power Hands. Some. Uh, it's a Capcom game. Power it's a very expensive. Hand. Oh, God Hand. God Hands. I so. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I bought God Hands for forty bucks. Uh, yeah, and I bought a Mortal Kombat Mythologies brand new for ten bucks. Holy cow! But I, I don't know about now, because like I told you, they are growing. So back then, five years ago, it was only two retro stores. Hmm. Now they're like five. <laughs> wow. Who knows? Yeah, who knows? But it's uh, cool to be able to reminisce about how prices back then were so much cheaper. Because I remember when uh, I think it was like a copy of Power Blade that I got for the NES, and this was back when I think it had just hit twenty five dollars. And I've seen that that game now is over eighty, and it's I'm just glad to be able to get this stuff so early on. Because I could not imagine having to spend over a hundred dollars for a video game now. It's it's crazy. Oh, sure. oh come on, bro. Trust me. <laughs> I know. I, I'm broke. I was in in a event last weekend. <laughs> um, yeah, man. I regret. You know what? I I I'm gonna tell you a little story. Mm -hmm. When I I came to the states in old seven, and I came with my Xbox 360. And it was, uh, I used to burn the, the disc oh, in yeah. order for not buy the games. And I came with my 360 and I came with my PS3. And I, I remember one of my first friends over here in the States. He's been a collector since, I think, 2002. Mm -hmm. And I remember going out with him. He always say let's go to this store that was in missouri in kansas city and they have a a, a franchise over there called vintage stuff vintage mm. stuff and they dude it's like going to a thrift store of dvds blu-rays video games and i remember him buying like like ninja gaiden trilogy mucha you know game all games mm -hmm. for 50 bucks 60 and i remember telling him like bro you you're buying an old game for 50 bucks and you can buy a ps3 game with that and i was like shut up just wait <laughs> and now now that guy has like probably like 200k worth in video games man he's yeah. insane it, it's so i regret it's man not not jumping into collecting around that time because now is now it's expensive yes it is but that's always why people got to be thankful for what they have because video gaming or just any form of entertainment can be very pricey to a lot of people but if it comes down to it just be grateful for the stuff you do have on hand and if you see something yeah. else down the line then pick it up if it means a lot to you it is not, it is what it is. It is what it is. <laughs> That's another one of the catchphrases that I like on the show. It is what it is. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it's well. A couple, it's, a couple, it's a couple of, crash, uh, how do you say, catchphrases. Yes, zingers or couple. whatever the term is. The Gabonese. The Gabonese or uh, the Gabo Dictionary, whatever they decide there to call it. Go. That's that's another yeah. little merch idea that they need to have. Man, you're giving me a lot of ideas, bro. <laughs> Please don't charge me. <laughs> <laughs> well, probably uh, Riff and uh, Ricky will probably come to see about those ideas. It's like a million dollar making idea proposition or whatever. Let's see. Who, who knows, huh? But for sure, I'm going to do those, I don't know if I ever told you, stickers. For sure. 
and pass them out to conventions to lucky people oh, yeah, who recognize dude. you. Oh yeah, dude. I'm gonna put it everywhere. You know, in the gas station, they're putting like the Biden sticker, the ones that say, "I did, I did that." Oh I'm yeah. Put, I don't know if I ever told you. <laughs> I gotta put, I gotta put it on top. I don't know if I ever told you. I did that. <laughs> Oh my god, that was incredible. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> yes, that is incredible. <laughs> Our favorite bit of the recording was that right there, but this whole interview has been phenomenal. But we are, Thank of course, you. getting close to the very end of the recording, and we always do our segment called The Five Count. So for anybody uh -oh. who has never... Oh, sorry? No, no, I just say, uh-oh. Uh oh, okay. I thought you were trying to remember something, but anyways, five count for anybody new who is watching. This is the highlight little segment that our guests gets to name off five different content creators of their choice, uh, choosing. Excuse me, from Twitch, YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, whatever platform is out there that they are watching that you need to check out. So, Mister Gabo the Giver, give us who you choose. Uh, gaming of the grid, YouTube, mm -hmm. for sure. Uh, my retro life, YouTube, that's a must. Oh too. yes. Uh, retro gaming pandemic, good friend of uh, the squad. That's a good one too. Incredible uh, guys too. Yeah. Uh, let me see who else. Oh, very underrated channel, and those guys are really good. Do you nerd? Oh Make yeah, sure. heard about them. Do you nerd? Really cool dudes. Uh, a N E S Attic. Really cool channel too. There's so many. Ross Lyman. Mm -hmm. Um, there's so many, man. Uh, I already have six. Uh, <laughs> Retro Wolf. Really cool too, and etc. 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 Well. We could basically come back to this like in a year's time because I know that I get a lot of other people that come on this show and that's one of our favorite segments to do is five count because there's always somebody new that they never named off that is on the show that they'll be like, hey, check out Tiger Chainsaw Show because if you like talk shows and somebody actually clipped that and put it up in Twitter to be like yeah they mentioned about our channel and that's awesome so it's cool that we're able to do this with people because it's always cool to oh, yeah, see stuff yeah yeah and, and we can help each other yeah. uh, that's cool I like it thank you for doing that it's, I hope somebody uh, mentioned me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm mentioning you right now. Mr. Gabo the Giver, the beautiful individual you are. You've shown Thank everybody you. no. the true meaning of happiness in this whole entire recording. Thank you for coming on. on, man. I was not expecting Mort to tag me. It's like, he would love to do one in a second, and then you just replied back of, like, just name the time and I'm all yours. That was so oh, romantic dude, I... sounding of you to say that. Oh, dude, I love talking with people. <laughs> I can be here hours and hours. So, it's good for you. It's only one hour, but I can sit down here and keep talking and talking. Well, people, when, yeah. when I do the podcast, people cut me because I keep talking and talking. <laughs> oh, that's okay. Um, but yeah, hopefully the next time we catch up again, that we'll yeah, hopefully course. be able to do a double of this because this was a lot of fun to be able to have you on, man. Yeah, thank you so much, man. Every time, just let me know. You know where to find me? I'll capture you in the middle of the night without uh, the guys knowing that you're gone, and then it'll be like just me dropping you off at school or something from out of the blue. Oh, so, sounds <laughs> sexy. Sexiness. Sexiness. <laughs>